here without a good reason. Good reason. Good reason. Good reason. Hello? Can I please get some assistance? This officer here is harassing me. He won't answer any of my questions I've been asking him. He took my license. Put your hands on the car. No. Why are you doing it? Put your hands on the car. What are you doing? Get away. Do not touch me. Do not touch me. I don't trust this officer. Please keep him away from me. I, he's been very friendly. He's put his hands on me. All I've asked him is to return my license. Please? Okay. Please don't touch me. Look. Look. I haven't done anything. Look. No. Stop touching me. Please stop touching me. Stop touching me. Let go of me. Let go of me. My mouth. I'm just broken neck. Dear producer Afiero, uh, there are a couple of things I need to say to you, and uh, chiefly, congratulations. I finally saw The Fighter yesterday. It's a splendid film, and you indeed show that you can make a movie that's a, simultaneously uh, kind of campy and poignant at the same time. It's a movie about the human condition. And you're about to make another movie uh, about the human condition that I've discussed at length with Casey Sherman. Uh, and chiefly, we agree on most things, but we disagree on the issue of the 2003 traffic stop. I say that Lico was boisterous. Yes, he was. However, uh, we cannot ignore the fact that that stop was likely unconstitutional. The other stops were thrown out, and I will show you that later on. Uh, furthermore, Casey's not an attorney. You know, as you can see, I've won cases about this issue. Uh, for that man right there, Michael Israel, and I you know, took him to the Court of Claims, the officers to the Court of Claims, but they were found to have made my client a victim of violent crime and uh, paid us for that as well. So just consider that when you make the movie, and I hope that you uh, treat it, the um, underlying issue there fairly. And uh, I look forward to it. Thank you. I just wonder if you're able to And you're in this? Does it matter? Yeah. You have your driver's license handy? Yeah, why? Do I have it, please? Of course. I explained to you why. Actually, no, I didn't know why you need my driver's license. Because you're in a suspicious place at a suspicious time. How am I in a suspicious place by a suspicious time? I, we're supposed to praise them when, when we feel it's appropriate, and we're definitely supposed to criticize them when we feel it's appropriate. And that's all I do. And for that, that I get threatened with arrest by a senator, a now senator? I don't think so. Open government? What do you mean? That government should be open and for the people and responsive to the people. There are also other people I have to point out tonight that literally helped with the book. Chris King, who's not only a photographer, but a, a pretty good researcher and investigative journalist himself. He, uh, <laughs> he, he, he sent some uh, documents my way when the, when the trail ran, uh, ran cold. Now, before we come back to Lico, we're going to take a look at Gregory Floyd for a minute. That's Greg Floyd. He's a freak, he's a dangerous man, and he's a multiple felon. And I believe he's also the murderer of Lico Peter Kenny on 5-11-2007. But Senator Kelly Ayotte, the then Attorney General of New Hampshire, covered up most of Floyd's actions in his background and on the fateful day. Why? For personal gain. And that's dangerous because law enforcement officials who have arrested Mr. Floyd personally told me on more than one occasion that he is going to hurt, maim, and kill again if and when he gets out of prison. We'll get back to that momentarily. He even tussled with court personnel. Is that right? And for what? Because I spoke my mind? Did I assault anybody? Did I move toward anybody? You know, I didn't have time to deal with that. And this guy can't be threatened to arrest me for that. I'll tell the President of the United States that much. I'll tell Kelly Ayotte that much. I'll tell her uh, henchman, uh, Steve Monier, the former U.S. Marshal, who threatened to have me arrested while I was on a public sidewalk that much. You know, not to mention Kelly Ayotte supporters over there in nigger mania that said my free press case smelled like a nigger. They could definitely go to hell. You know, you people have to stop abusing the American public.
The pending lawsuit against Gregory Floyd and others will show that Kelly Ayotte knew before she cleared him in 24 hours for the possible murder of Leeko Kenny that he had threatened a school admin with, watch your mouth, I know where you live and I know the route you take home, and if you're not careful, they're going to take you out in a body bag. Continue on then, undaunted. What I'm saying in this story is, everyone knew Floyd was dangerous, look at that. Both of these men were dangerous. Now, what needs to happen is people need to stop making people like Leek O'Kenny or me look like dangerous people and are threatening to arrest us and pay attention to what's really going on out there. Kelly, don't duck away. Don't forget about that cop that you uh, exonerated to, the one who liked to stick knives near women. And you, Adam Harding. A little too busy in the party bus with Kelly to really care about these uh, substantive issues, is that it? And you, Tom Fahey, you know about all this stuff. You haven't mentioned it. So, why don't you take a picture, Adam? Last longer? Oh, wait a minute. I'm the one that took the picture. A young man and his father came upon a violent confrontation. That's their pickup in the background. Franconia office... Now let me show you right here what Kelly Ayotte's friends at WMUR left out. Some 40-foot tire tracks from that Tahoe bashing Lico Kenny's Celica in in violation of pursuit policies. And you're about to see Bruce McKay violate the OC uh, spray policies, which dictate that warnings should be given, advance notice, things of that nature, to help you know, defuse a potentially violent response. Bruce McKay was trying to stop Lico Kenny from fleeing a traffic stop. <laughs> Okay, oh, that's a lie. That's the third version of his story. The first two versions, he stated that he had shot the driver within about four seconds. And Kelly Ayotte, the former New Hampshire Attorney General and current U.S. Senator, knows all of this. It's from her official report. And the mass media is not covering it, so I will. In the lawsuit that's going on right now, there's a reason why this man cannot get an attorney. It's because the smart attorneys are reading my journal, and they know that this man is a liar. And they know Kelly Ayotte is a liar, too. But it's kind of tricky. People don't want to say that publicly, but I will. As a former assistant attorney general, I've never seen a case this heinous in my personal experience. And I told Vice President Biden, I said, look it, whatever the matter is with Kelly Ayotte, she's not getting the job done. There were no fingerprint analyses conducted on this, even though they clearly should have been, as you can see. Um, the windshield bullet there that was struck, the placement of the spent casings on the grassy knoll, there's always a grassy knoll, as well as the shattered glass inside Caleb's passenger seat all prove that Gregory Floyd did not speak to Lee Kenny before firing. She is a liar. She should be disbarred. It should not be a U.S. Senator. So he's clearly in charge. Like, he ends up going home with one of Lee Kenny's uh, live rounds in his pocket somehow. We don't know how that happened. But anyway, there has apprehension for their life. Could be manslaughter, could be self-defense, but the government doesn't want to tell you any of that. All right, they got to make legal a cold-blooded cop killer. Nothing more, nothing less. All right, and Sam, and then you know you see the same thing that Gregory Floyd has to be the hero. All right, and that's it. That's, that's the story. It's New Year's. Well, I don't know. <laughs> How's that for a postmodern John Wayne jackbooted response? Listen, this guy knew that the Stadies were not coming because if it had been the Stadies, it would have been someone like Todd Landry, Trooper Landry, who wrote him up for acting stupid in a Hells Angels incident. You know, no, he knew that Cox and Ball were coming, and he knew that they were going to beat Lico Kenny's ass for no reason. Okay, notice how long McKay was silent after Lico Kenny tells him, you don't have a right to keep me here without good reason? 
That's because McKay knew he didn't have good reason. He was just playing with the kid, giving him a hard time. Hello? Can I please get some assistance? This officer here is harassing me. He won't answer any of my questions I've been asking him. He took my license. Put your hands on the car. Oh, why are you doing it? Put your hands on the car. What are you doing? Get away. Do not touch me. Do not touch me. I don't trust this officer. Please keep him away from me. I, he's been very threatening. He's put his hands on me. All I've asked him is to return my license. Please, okay. please don't touch me. Look, look, I haven't done anything. Look, no, stop touching me. Please stop touching me. Stop touching me. Let go of me. Let go of me. Oh, oh, oh. My mouth, I'm just broken that. What's that all about? He's not approaching anybody. He's still there. No, there's no probable cause. McKay has blocked his egress, which is not constitutional under New Hampshire law. Officers Cox and Ball come from another jurisdiction, and they torque the guy for no reason. It's like a homeless person in the city would be on the street starving. A homeless person up here might be on the street, but they're not going to be starving because there's too many good people, and they just can't. They just no one will sit around and watch that happen. A lot, everyone will throw in some food for, for people. Yeah, it's Woody's and, job. Yeah. Yeah. It's off. Yeah, yeah. It really it's is. It's a tight natural. It's a tight knit yeah. community. I mean, not everyone's. Even people who aren't family, we're friends. It's really. It's friends where our parents were friends, and their parents were friends, and their parents were the people who came and settled the place. Well, you know that's that's how. That's how I get up here. You should. And that's how my folks met, and that's how we got the, the cottage. We bought, they bought the land from Jack. And you should have heard all the stories that were at my grandfather's funeral service. I mean, people loved my grandfather and grandmother so much for what they did. Uh, they were such open people. They started a tennis camp, and instead of being like, "This is ours, come here and pay for it," it wasn't like the doors were open. That was what everyone came and said. You come there, they give you a job. They give you a place to stay. They pay you for staying at a nice place to live. I mean, you can't beat it. You can't beat it. 